When you want to burn fat, you have to burn fat in a flat state. You cannot be full, pumped and burn fat. You have to give your body a reason to burn fat. So the process of burning fat takes a few days or weeks sometimes. Now you can get rid of the initial bloat, the water retention and some sort of fat cells with it as well. You definitely can. But your body needs to be like, okay, now I'm in the point of burning fat. So when your muscles are depleted, you're going to be weaker, of course. So that will tell you, oh yeah, I'm a bit weaker. When your muscles are depleted, they're going to look smaller and you might think, I'm losing muscle. Yeah. So it's not actual fact that because you burn more fat, the faster you burn fat, the better it is in my opinion. I don't believe in this burn fat slowly. Burn fat quick. Why, why would you want to prolong your goal? It's safe to burn fat fast if you do it the correct way. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, what would you say? What is the correct way? Oh, well, there's, okay. So it, as a blanket statement, control insulin sensitivity. That's right. the main thing over here. Right. How do we do that? One, by not eating carbs every single day. So we don't do this bullshit carb cycling. Because if you carb cycle, you're having carbs every single day. You don't need to spike your insulin every single day. You don't need to spike your insulin multiple times a day. So people are like, you know, back in the days, or maybe even now, many people have this thing about, let's spike metabolism a few times a day. You're adding fuel to the fire. You're keeping the furnace alive. It's absolute bullshit. It doesn't make no sense. So let's just keep spiking insulin. If we keep spiking insulin, when is the body ever going to get the response to say, stop burning fat? Yeah. That's, it doesn't make no sense. Will it work to a certain degree? Yes. Will it have amazing gains? No. Are you going to burn fat to the point where you're like, wow, not only have I burnt fat, I'm looking leaner, I'm feeling better, and my digestion is optimal. That's the key to burning fat. If you can control your gut, your digestion, to the right amount, and you can control insulin sensitivity, and you're always in a very nice, chilled out state, your body's gonna burn fat. If you're in a state where people are taking fat burners, people are taking caffeine, all this kind of shit, and your heart's pumping, you know, 200 beats per minute, that's not the way you burn fat, that's the way you burn out. There's right. a big difference in that. So the proper, the, the, I, the, the thing what people are scared of when it comes to fat burning is they burn out too quick because they're doing too much too quick. And it's not too much too quick as in fat burning, they're doing the wrong things. They eat too many times a day, they're taking caffeine, they're trying to burn uh, like, you know, a week's worth of food in one session. They're hitting high intensity cardio, which you should never do if you're in a fat burning phase, I don't believe, right. because it's just too taxing. When it comes to cardio, the one thing you should remember when it comes to cardio is this, can you do it every single day? It's very simple. Anytime you finish a cardio session, you'd be like, I should be able to do that tomorrow. If you fatigue yourself to the point you can't do that tomorrow, you're not going to continue to burn fat. So you're saying that, uh, so a lot of people over here believe that you should take like four to five meals a day in like small portions when yep. you're trying to burn fat. If you're going to take bigger meals, then you might like retain fat. So that's bullshit as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't believe anyone should really be eating five times a day unless you're a bodybuilder. Right. A strong man or a powerlifter who's like, I'm a hard gainer, I need to eat more food. The more food I have, the better I'm going to lift the weights. Because right. of course, there is a point where you do need to start eating more. You can't just be a world-class powerlifter eating three meals a day unless you know, you're a genetic freak and you can eat copious amounts of food. And I spoke to uh, someone who was a, a world-class powerlifter, Benedict Magnuson, and he used to eat a kilo and a half of potatoes in one sitting. Now, if you can do that, then genetically you can eat more in one sitting. So you can get away with eating two or three times a day. But if you're not able to chuck away that kind of food and you're a power lifter or a bodybuilder, you need multiple, you need more protein to keep burning through the day, then you should be eating five, six times a day or seven or eight, depending on what you're planning. So if somebody is like a normal gym goer, they just do it for their health. They want to build some decent amount of muscle on yeah. themselves or just burn yeah. some fat and get in shape. What would you recommend? Like are two to three meals enough for them? Yeah, two. I mean, someone like me, two meals a day. If you want to, you know, push it a little bit more, have three. It's okay. Right. Three, like generally it's like, you do your cardio in the morning, you have breakfast. Yeah. You go do your work, whatever, you know, whatever your job is. You go to the gym in the evening time. After the gym, you're gonna have some food. And then in the evening, when you're at home, you can have a snack or have some salt, some food. But generally, two meals a day is more than enough. You're not gonna die. I'll give you an example. You can, your body can go without food for 60 days, 50, right. 60 days. There's 
research done beyond that as well. People are just scared to lose their heart and muscles. That's why they just keep on yeah, but, eating but he, okay, to maximize okay, protein so, synthesis. So he, here's the thing, right? If somebody was to, let's just say, let's go to the extreme. Let's say they would starve themselves to get the fowl. Because eventually you would get the fowl. Yep. You starve yourself to get the fowl and you had actual muscle. You'd build actual real muscle, right? Right. Let's go 60 days, no food. Now, this is an extreme example I'm just giving you. I'm just, let's just, just entertain me, right? 60 days, no food. You've got down to 10% body fat. But you look stringy and scrawny. And all the muscle you think you had from back in the days has completely gone. Now, it would only take you four weeks of having a good diet to get the muscle back. And you're going to be as just as lean as you are after 60 days of dieting. Is that not a short time period of doing something? Then thinking... I don't want to lose this hard-earned muscle, which I haven't really got because I can't really see because it's covered in the fat. It's pointless. It's, it's unhealthy for the start. I would rather, and so is, let's just, let me just say this as well. So is not eating for 60 days. That's also unhealthy. But I would take that option rather than killing myself slowly for the next 60 years. Right. So you actually recommend what I've taken out of it, that... Uh when you're trying to burn fat, you should try to lose it as fast as possible. Yeah. And once you're done with it, because of muscle memory, even if you have lost some kind of muscle, you can just put it back on Always. in another month. And better. It will come back on better. Right. The reason why is you're trying to do two things at once. You cannot burn fat and build muscle together at the same time. Or even preserve muscle. So all this shit about I'm going to burn fat and try and hold on to muscle, it doesn't make no sense. Just don't do that. Just do one thing at a time. Everything will come back whatever you've lost whilst you were fat if it was actual muscle muscle does not need fat to be present it might look visually bigger because it's covered in a layer of fat it might look visually a little bit more i in fact for me i think muscles look a little bit more pleasing when there's no fat on them yeah. they might not be bigger like for example when i'm a lot leaner i will put a jacket on and people think this guy's really skinny and then i'll take the jacket off, jacket off and they'll be like wow you've grown and I'm thinking, I've not grown, I've lost five kilograms. I know I've not grown, but I look bigger to the eye because the more cuts and the more details you have, yeah, the you just look a little bit bigger. Yeah. So the, I don't know why everyone's so scared of dieting uh, and this, like you just said, losing muscle. I think those people have never been lean before and it's really bad for their health long term to stay this out of shape just to hold on a little bit of muscle, which let's be honest, they don't really have. <laughs> that, that is it. Those people are afraid of that. Exactly, yes. Don't really have that muscle to begin with. If they, if they, they have they had the muscle, they would know it. it'll come back. It's not a great example. I've, I've already mentioned this guy's name today. Kevin Leverone. Yeah. The guy in the off season completely lost his weight because he didn't like being that heavy and he didn't want to he knew to prolong his life he needed to be smaller. He stayed small, competitions in six months, how much money am I getting paid? What contracts have I got? These are the contracts that are great pump himself for the steroids, eat all the food, within 12 weeks on Mr. Olympia stage. Mr. Olympia's over, okay, great, got my paycheck. Do I need to be this big anymore? No, great, I'll stop everything. And he did it over and over again. Now he's almost 60. Ronnie Coleman is the same age as him. Yes. Look, I, I, don't, I don't like saying this, but Ronnie Coleman's not in the best shape right now, is he? Yep. He's not doing great. Yep. It's because he, he took that, he didn't take that time off. There's many bodybuilders like Kevin Navrone no. who are in the same era of Kevin Navrone that don't look as good and aren't living as quality of a life as him today because Kevin Navrone knew from that age, take time off. He knew it. He was one of the guys that I thought of thinking, okay, this makes sense. This guy's doing TRT. He used to come on YouTube back in the days, you know, it was called Levron Report and I'm, gonna, I'm going for a run today. I'm lifting the weights. I'm doing sauna every morning. I'm doing abs in the sauna. You know, he used to, do, he used to live that athlete, athletic lifestyle. That was actually the thing that got me thinking, you know what, if this guy is Mr. Olympia, or was Mr. Olympia almost like second place or whatever, can actually get away from all that muscle, then all these people are afraid to losing muscle don't really have muscle. That's the reality. Yeah. So you have to understand there's a psychology behind it. Then just don't do two things at once. It's very simple. Just one thing at a time and your body's going to like, okay, yeah, great. Let me just tell you who can do this because there's obviously going to be people out there saying, yeah, but you can build muscle and burn fat at the same time. Yes, you can. There's a couple of instances for that. Number one, if you were a rookie, an all-out rookie, right, and you're a beginner in the gym, you can build muscle and burn fat, get leaner at the same time for about a year with some good training and guidance. Number two, if you've never taken steroids before, ever, and you're a bit fat and you start on a good heavy course of steroids, you will get massive, build muscle, get leaner at the same time. Number three, if you were someone who's been muscular before, like the example I've just given you, 
and now you've lost, you know, gone a little bit fatter, and you're thinking Kevin Everone example, and you jump back on the juice, or even if you do it naturally, you can build muscle, the muscle that you had lost, not new muscle, just the muscle you had lost, that'll come back and you'll burn fat. So they're the only three instances I think that that, you know, the magical potion thing that, you know, the magical conundrum that we all want to achieve, build and burn, that is how it happens. Anyone in between, it's not going to happen. So an experienced natural lifter cannot do it? Never. Right. Impossible. And, right. and when you say natural, no. <laughs> Never. Like, yeah, if, yeah, you, just if you clear. just started training for six months, you've probably got, you're going to have to hire a good coach. If you start training, hire a good coach if you're natural, get on a good diet, get on a good training plan. For six months, you've got six months time to build as much muscle as possible. After that, bro, you're just going to be a normal dude. It's not going to happen. Even right. if you're natural. If you start taking a year, that's a little bit different. So what would you say is a good healthy body fat percentage from a no for a person who's a normal gym goer? Like a healthy body fat percentage? 10. 10%. 10%. Yeah. I think I always try to maintain around 10 to 15, yeah? Right. It's very healthy. It means you can go out, you can enjoy your life. You're not going to be, you know, oh, there's this going on and that's going on and someone's birthday and anniversary and holidays and all this kind of shit. That we just, we like, we enjoy doing. And if you want to eat chocolate, you can eat chocolate. Just don't pig out every single day. 10 to 15, I think it's very, very healthy. I think it's a good range. It's a range that I like to stay in when I'm away on like in a hot, when I'm living in a hot country, I like to go below like t eight to 10, but I think 10 to 15 is perfectly fine. Most people aren't even 20 or below 20. That's the majority. I think there's, this is actual statistic that's been released in America. There's <laughs> more millionaires than there are six packs in the US. Right. <laughs> Which means what? Well, that having a six pack is more scarce. It's harder to get a six pack in America yeah, yeah. than it is a six, than, than it is to be a millionaire. So uh, being a millionaire is easy nowadays, but having a six pack's hard because of all the things around us. We look around and there's all these food places opening up, and you've got burgers and brownies and all these nice desserts to eat. And people are going out every so often, and you go on Instagram and you think, oh, this is a nice place. That's a good, you know. You sit and watch Netflix, and you just want to grab some, you know, snacks. So it's very hard to have a six pack nowadays, but it's easy to get a million pound.